Hello. Oh, oh that's rough. <laughs> that rough. Wow. And my microphone's not even broken. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a review that we had not planned until two weeks ago. Uh, Borat 2. I am... I think you mean the subsequent movie film review. Mm -hmm. That's true. You're completely right. Borat, the subsequent film review. Plus there's that full title, Deliver Monkey Joe to Vice Presidential for Gift. Uh, I am uh, Princess Travis. Travis Snow. I am the not suitable for children under three, Jessica. Oh, I am the brought the girl for you, Taylor Field. <laughs> Make pennies. <laughs> I am the not so good at making nicknames, cringing movie Madison. There you go. <laughs> oh boy. So, uh, yeah, before we get in, this is quickly November 7th is our 24 hour cherry stream. Check that. We got lots of things going on. We got title matches. It's myself versus Jessica in a history making match because it's either she wins her oh. first title or I finally beat here. Oh, what? What do you, what do you have to say, future loser? Did you uh, tune in at all during our uh, little commentary track? It wasn't live, so I couldn't. Taylor. Taylor. Well, the agreement is still. He, well, he's a, you he said if he didn't tune in, then it's agreed to. So uh, Yeah, so we decided that if I beat you, that I get to be the one to shave your head when we hit our number, when we raise all our funds. I'm fine with that. Just let me do the first strokes because the first strokes are like, remember when you did a Taylor and it went like, Zuh! and it like took it. <laughs> that did hurt. Yeah. <laughs> let me do those and then you can finish the rest. That's fine with me. But it, and I bought a new razor. I haven't even used it once. I bought a fresh <laughs> <new> razor. <laughs> so I'm, I'm down, down for that. I'll have to think of something if I win though. You're going to have to, I, I'm going to think of a counter offer. But no, I didn't, uh, which is fine because our Borat uh, live watch along the first film got banned from YouTube. So maybe it's a good idea you didn't stream it because they don't want us talking about political stuff. But November 7th, uh, yeah, title match. Taylor and Kirkland are going for a full hour in Call of Duty, a full hour, only allowed two two minute breaks. So that's going to be tons of fun. Taylor and Madison are versing myself and Emily. The battle of the almost newlyweds. It's going to be lots of fun. We're going to have charades. We're going to have the newlywed games, which is uh, Amanda and Sarah are making the questions. I don't know what they are. And then we're going to be playing some Mario Party. Uh, Madison, are you, are you ready to watch your future husband lose again? But this time you're going to be right beside him while he loses. Hell no. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Okay. Confident. Yeah. Yeah. You better come to play, Travis. Oh, we're coming. We definitely we're, are. Me and Ellie are coming all the time. We're always down to play. We're always down to do this. So, and then finally, we're going to have tons of events throughout the whole night, but then we have Super Civil Servants versus us in a trivia battle, which is going to be lots of fun. So let's get in this. We'll start off with non-spoiler thoughts, and then we'll jump into spoilers. Uh Taylor, I'll start with you and then just go Taylor, Mass, and Jessica because that's the way you guys are laid on the couch. So there you go. That's perfect. So uh, what did you think of Borat 2? Obviously, you don't got to tell us about what you thought of Borat 1. People can go back. We did the commentary track on the feed. So if you want our thoughts, you can go listen to the whole thing there. But what did you think of Borat, the subsequent sub film? Subsequent movie film. Uh, subsequent this movie film. Subsequent movie film. Subsequent movie film. <laughs> This uh, this movie just it caught me by surprise in many ways because I feel like they they didn't know the direction they were heading and then like society just kind of like took a turn for the worst. COVID popped up and then they just took full advantage of it. And again, like I said in the comm track, they just the ending was just sh like Shanghai somehow into just fitting in with society and what was going on. And they took full advantage of that. I thought it was hilarious. Just. Again, they there's moments in this film that just had me absolutely cringing. Like the, like is this spoilers that we're getting to or non spoilers? No, it's just what you thought of the film as usual. Oh right, right, right. yeah, Would yeah. You yeah. What I it? Did you like it exactly? I I liked a lot of it. I didn't know who the actress was that played Tutar, but I tried <laughs> googling her and I couldn't find anything on this this lady. Well, so. This is her first film, so. I deduced that much. Okay. I, I did say that uh, probably for they didn't want people to recognize her like mm -hmm. they did with Borat, right? 100%. It's kind of hard to pull some of the stuff off that they did if you recognize who the actress is. I think Do you know how her, old she is? No, I don't. And I think even her names in the credits of her, that's not her actual name. So I think mm. they like, really played hard. Because even a video came out today of her actually meeting Donald Trump Jr. That's not in the film. There's no spoilers. <laughs> but she like went in the White House. So I guess there's still maybe some shenanigans down the line we might see, you know. Well, that was something else I noticed. There was a lot from the trailer that they didn't show in uh, the movie, like her riding on top of the car and a few other scenes. So, 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I forgot about that with the commercial. Yeah, mm-hmm. only Madame Bear going far. Whatever that was. So, would you recommend it, Taylor? I think everyone should see this movie. <laughs> everyone. I, well, actually, no. I think, I think, like everyone that's okay with humor and, and everything and being politically incorrect can see it. But there's a lot of demographics that should avoid this movie at all costs. Would you recommend? And I'm it quite to your mom? surprised. What's that? Would you recommend it to your mom? Yeah, I would. Oh. Um, <laughs> But they're they're <laughs> like, unless they're the demographics that were in this that were featured in this movie that were somehow like super polite and okay about a lot of the shit that he was doing, then like yeah, that's good. But I'm I'm quite surprised how friendly people were towards him with the shit that he was pulling off. Madison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So I actually haven't actually seen the first one. So I went in completely Ooh. blind. Um, you know, I did see in the past, um, what was that Bruno? Bruno. Yeah, Bruno. That's what I saw. I and saw, you saw The Dictator. Yes. Yeah, so I've seen him in movies before, but I've never seen this movie. So I kind of went in with a kind of an idea because I watched the commercials for it. But uh, all in all, it was... Uh, it was pretty good. I thought the people in the movie that he was actually talking to, um, they were really nice people, you know, like these, these are real people that have taken him into their house and he's smacking their walls with a pan trying to <laughs> kill this disease and stuff. So, um, but pretty, pretty good, pretty good. Um, really funny, super cringing. I would definitely suggest it. Um, yeah, that's that's what I have to say. <laughs> Jessica, uh, just Kyle's asking where the Zoom link is. Oh, is Kyle's Kyle... asking. Wow, look at that. Oh, we're not, we're not live, but I can send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get your Amazon? Uh, I can't. Uh, no, of course not. No, he really just quit like <laughs> so fast. Well, Jessica, yeah, you give your thoughts, and I will get Kyle in. So my, my thoughts to start this off. I definitely tell my mom to watch this. I am a hundred percent interested to actually. I would do a watch along with my mom because I think it would be some pretty good laughs. Uh, yeah, I had a great time watching this. I can definitely, as I said to Taylor, kind of when this started. Um, it like normally Travis definitely kind of like fills the blank space hundred (laughs) percent you're the (laughs) yeah there was the eyebrow raise you know it's true we know it's true (laughs) I talk a lot another eyebrow raise (laughs) um so it was kind of hard being Travis and under like watching the movie and you know dealing with stuff that isn't podcast related on my phone uh so i actually plan on watching this again in the next day or two um because i did enjoy it and i really want to get some of those full jokes that being said i still thought it was hilarious (laughs) there the call out on trudeau oh my (laughs) so gosh um i i i think my sense of humor is definitely a little different because i didn't find it really cringy i found it pretty great (laughs) <laughs> um, but uh yeah overall definitely a recommend from me well yeah there you go yeah i i'm pretty much in the same camp i would say for recommendation if you like the first one you're gonna really enjoy this i think luckily we've had so many sequels the past so i never saw zombie land too so people said that was one that didn't do that but barring that you have stuff like zoolander and anchorman and all these sequels that come out years later and they are just they just are nowhere near the classics the first one were. So that's what was kind of the worry of this was like kind of everyone else. Like I, I, I was never too worried because I always trust Sasha Barrett Cohen. I love everything you've done because I saw Borat and then I looked at all the stuff in the past. I love Bruno. Bruno, I loved What is America that he did last year, which is a similar vein of this. Uh, so I wasn't too worried, but there is still a sense of like, is this character going to wear thin? And it really didn't. And even if it was going to, they added this daughter character, which is going to spoil which really worked out. But uh, yeah, I would recommend it to everyone that loved the Forest Borat. If you haven't seen it, I think you would enjoy it as long as you have fun poking at fun at yourself, because I feel like they tackle 
a lot of if you're not american you know you might think oh it's just about american it doesn't like you said there's jokes about canada but just even just beliefs as far as you can believe something and as long as you have if you're fine with it being poked fun at it and having some fun with it then you can watch this if you're somebody that doesn't really like political humor if you're somebody that like lets something like abortion if you that's not a funny topic stuff like if you're that type of person then this is not for you i i think most of our audience would enjoy this i think Sasha barry cohen is great i think the first one for me is funnier per se but i don't think it's like miles better i would say it's a little bit better but i think this one did go for a bit more heartfelt and i've been saying this since the previews i thought it's gonna be way more political and it really is like the first few minutes they take shots at canada they take shots at uh, saudi arabia you know your favorite place taylor there's tons of things where they're just like taking shots everywhere and going everywhere so i think they 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 did a good job it's definitely left slanted it's definitely more towards hey we're gonna joke around with republicans but even then there's some stuff or Republicans and Democrats that made them look bad equally. So I think it was really good. And uh, yeah, it's one, luckily, I will watch again in the future. So you mean like when he's sneaking into the Republican, uh, like Michael Pence, like conference, <laughs> and he walks in with the, uh, the Klan outfit? <laughs> Well, let's get into spoilers. Let's get into spoilers then if we're going to start doing that. So yeah, uh, three, two, one, we're into spoilers now. Uh, there'll be an ad break right here. And there it is. It's there. It passes by. So, uh, yeah, that that was well. The fir- the whole crux of the film is he's going to try and give a gift to Mike Pence. So right away, it's it's very political. But obviously, got the abortion thing. He's going to many people like Rudy Giuliani, which has like a big finale and stuff. But uh, I, I surprisingly, uh, some of the funniest stuff was the stuff with the daughter. I was worried at first when it started that she was just going to be this add on character and she would take away from Borat. But no, something like I think my funniest set piece is when he drops her off at the babysitters, and I just loved everything about that. Like, here's her ball and chain. She sits in the corner. They're doing like the the food guarding treat thing you do with dogs with the whistle, and he gives her like, and just seeing this woman try to deal with like, what do I say in this situation? What do I do? And just everything of just like, well, you can't drive. Well, I can drive. I'm a woman. Yeah, exactly. So that was some of the that was probably the biggest highlight for me was that scene and some of the stuff with the daughter. Funny enough. Uh, yeah, that was really, really good. I think in terms of like, just something that caught me off guard was when, again, when he walked in that synagogue and he was just totally cosplayed out the yin yang. He had the devil tail, the dragon wings, demon oh wings. Oh my God. He had the long, the super long nose. He had the puppet dangling and the but sack of money. The line that he used for why he was going to go in there. I was ready to die. So I was going to go to the quickest place to get shot. Oh yeah, I'll go to the synagogue and wait for the next mass shooting. That's just yeah. so bad. I forgot about that one, but that is up there in the top three. That's why I'm like Jessica, where I probably will watch this again very soon because the first Borat I remember, I had that on like loop for a while, and I got that DVD. It was just so funny that I watched it again and again. And there's just so many even jokes. I did put on subtitles because I didn't want to miss anything, and I was watching this late, so I didn't want to wake up any kids. But uh, yeah, that that was that was hellaciously funny i could it's just some stuff you can't believe in these women are just nice and they start eating food together and telling them mm-hmm. stuff yeah. see i do think that that is part of the reason that there's a different kind of shock value is that you didn't really necessarily expect everything with the first one where this yeah. one going into it you definitely you're waiting to see and you're waiting to see how he'll top what he's done previously and what kind of lines he'll use so you know, just talking about how you didn't necessarily think it was better than the first one. I think that precedence of you already have that shock value from the first time you saw it is kind of hard to beat. Um, but 100%. I, yeah, I know. I 100% agree with you because you're expecting it now. The first Borat, it was just going climbing, climbing, climbing. So when you get to Borat 2, you're already at that high point of I've seen all this wild shit he's done. And he's like been around for years. He's doing other stuff. And we've heard all these other stories. So I agree with you there. That's why some of the shock value might go away after at this point. So I think that's why they tried to add a bit more of the story with the daughter for like a film sake. Because him and Ozma in the first film, they okay, they have an argument, they have a naked fight, then they get back together. But there's not really like a major acting storyline there where this was like accepting your daughter, accepting being a parent, stuff like that. And that yeah, that was gonna be my second point as to why this one might not really have been as good as the first in that sense is this one definitely had more kind of storyline to it. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of points where it was about him and his daughter and them doing things that aren't 
related to kind of like pulling these jokes and tricks and I mean obviously you know that she's an actor too so it's it's just two actors talking back and forth so I felt like there was definitely a lot more of that in this one than there was in the first one well I think that's like Taylor said I would love in a few months to get the timeline of when they filmed everything because it's like this honest I don't think they did but this honestly feels like a movie like COVID happened and then they filmed it you know like I don't even know if it was I think it was happening before obviously there's that fucking twist at the end where Borat is revealed to be patient zero and he's the one that's spread it all and I was like oh my god but like I do wonder when they filmed this all because it just it, it literally does feel like the plot of like those scenes just respond off the world where the first boy rap that movie could happen at any point they just do it where this was literally like the back has all about covid and stuff like that like there's very well halfway through the movie you know that conference with michael pence when he says there's 12 confirmed cases of covid in the states i mean you can date that like probably like we were saying like may or something like that and the movie already had scenes prior to that that so that's what I mean. Like, like when did they start oh. filming these scenes? Like, were they? Did it had happen? to have been like a month or two right before COVID got into the states. Like, probably like January, February, when things were still normal here, but COVID was still a thing back. And they like, must these. have changed everything about this movie, at least the back half, because if they started this movie before COVID happened, and then COVID's happening while they did this movie, the whole back half is about COVID. Obviously, there's the Rudy Giuliani stuff, but lots of like getting around this whole patient zero. I, I sec- totally think so. A hundred percent. I'm sure I think the daughter part for sure was planned but yeah and you know like the I put the baby in my daughter like mm-hmm. that part was all planned but then all of a sudden yeah there's COVID okay well now we can incorporate that into this and make it more political and that's you know the the Wuhan and flu more, song yeah, and more memorable too you know yeah. Oh, yeah. And it feels like it literally feels like this movie was made in the last month. Like it wasn't like you said, Taylor, you could date it. But that's what it feels like. It feels like they just got out there and said, we got to do this. And what like, like I said, I can't wait to hear the story of how they made this. Like imagine making this movie and then the middle of this happens. And what do we do? And they go, well, we're going to put it on the movie. And that's where it feels like super timely right now. And it's it's it, it, it's crazy that they pulled they it's crazy that they pulled this off for so long, and kept a secret. But it's crazy that they pulled this off right now and did it it's it's mm-hmm. well there's been obviously filming going on for a little bit yes you can date that the mike pence thing but also additionally the um, the babysitter the nanny mm-hmm. i mean she looks different from the first time he drops off his daughter to when he goes to pick up the ball and chain and she acts different you know she's got the mask the stay away yeah. from me the not hugging in the car so there was obviously some covid development between when he dropped her off with the treat clicker and when he went and picked up her stuff. Will you be my new black wife? No, I won't. <laughs> okay. And then he just runs away. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. I loved that lady. I don't know if she is a... Because some of that stuff felt too... Like once they got in the car, I don't know. Because we debated that with the first Borat of like, what is exactly full on just real? And it's him ribbing people? Or what is it acting? Or what is it? It's half and half where it's like they've let someone in on the joke a little bit but respond and with her I felt like she had to know some stuff because it was just too vital to the plot because what if she doesn't give this speech to this girl right about you know being a woman not listening to a man you can be your own person so that's why I feel like there had to be some point where she was brought in but whether she's an actor or a real woman I love that babysitter the whole, the whole time and I love their fight when she leaves Borat of just like look there's a woman driving a car right there and the funny thing is like there's this whole like they didn't even show a shot of him but there's a taxi driver just sitting there while they're having this entire higher argument conversation that's what i said too i was like i can't believe the uber driver didn't even get out of the car at all while all of this is happening (laughs) i wonder if something happened and he said he didn't want to be included in the film or something because like usually in those situations they always shoot the person's reaction right so the fact that they didn't shoot his reaction i wonder if they shot and he's like yeah i don't you can't put me in this film or however that works because we see some people's face sometimes get blared out but some don't it's weird how that works yeah that was what i was gonna say like even that bathroom scene there's one person who gets their Mm -hmm. face blurred out and one who doesn't and then at the rally there's randomly people that are you know the the guy that does a nazi salute like his face gets blurred out yeah you shake your head you know exactly who i'm talking about because you were probably like what the fudge man yeah it was there's some crazy stuff in there um trying to think about what else uh i loved the uh that's why it was my nickname i love the whole princess melania thing and when they Man, when they did that Oof. tape of the first dance with her and Trump, that was just, oh, my God. Like, again, it's so true because he's a, he's a pig. But, like, 
it was just they they went for the they went for the jugular on that stuff and it was there was some good material and like you guys said in the nonce was the justin trudeau thing of just like one the setup of like america had elected this terrible leader almost like the devil in car and then it's like barack obama and like and then he's like he's inspired so many other countries to like elect people of color and then they show these people and then they show justin trudeau and it's just like oh it's uh, just, and imagine because i imagine if you're justin trudeau you don't think that's gonna happen you think you're gonna sit down and watch out <laughs> we're gonna watch borat make fun of our american fellow people and the first five minutes is a picture of you i wonder if he laughs it off or if it's just a turn off right away of like oh i can't watch oh, this anymore because yeah, that's definitely. just oof, never gonna I- leave him yeah, I'm surprised that nobody has brought up the interview yet. For me, that was the moment that was like the most jaw dropping of I didn't even know what to say when it was like, take it to the bedroom. Oh, yeah. And, like, that was just a moment like, oh, my gosh, like, I, I can't watch this, you know? <laughs> Thank God Bora show, showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised he did because that's been the whole debate. Because, yeah, so Rudy Giuliani, obviously, huge political figure in New York, huge Trump supporter. They go over that in the film. But he is a guy that has such a legacy in politics. And now he put out the statement of, while well, the video was doctored and he was just tucking in his pants and stuff like that. And it's a strange video because, like, she does, like, untuck his shirt. But then he does sort of tuck his pants in. But then his hands go, like, a little further than you would tuck your pants. So it was like, it, the second he goes to the bedroom, you know, okay, it's, this is, this is fucked he up now. Like, this is, down though. Like mm. he was like, <laughs> yeah. That, well, that was exactly what I said is like, I can understand why they stopped it when they did, but I kind of was surprised that they did. I thought they would have let it go a little bit longer and kind of seen exactly where it would have gone, especially like, she's not 15. Like I'm no. gonna, I'm mm. gonna assume that she's of age. Um, but yeah, like I'm looking right now. Yeah, he called it. It was fake news, and that oh, it was course. doctored. Oh yeah, doctored footage. Well, and that's even if she's not 15, maybe they just felt like they didn't want to put her in a compromising position because they they probably you know they get the backlash of like you put this girl in. But even then, I would think this girl or woman probably agreed to say like, hey, let's see if we can peg this asshole. Because like in the interview, she multiple times like leans over and like rubs his knee and stuff like that. Like she was like, and this is a guy he's married. And obviously, if she's 15, it's it's not good. But uh, Kyle, you you've joined us for the audio listeners. Oh. Kyle Zoom. Oh, oh, hey Kyle. J- just so we know, <laughs> okay, uh, she's 24. She's 24. Oh, so there you go. So there's nothing legal wise. Even when he ran in there, what he was, even Giuliani was like, What are you wearing? And he just has this, and he's just like, Take me, take me up the news, not her. And it's like, Oh my God. Oh my, God. my, my anus is tight. <laughs> yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna leave before the golden shower? Uh, Kyle, what he's were too young for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were your overall thoughts of the film? What were some of your favorite parts that we were just talking about now? And we're in spoilers, so you're fine. Oh, okay. Um, I think. This film was amazing. It was so funny. Like I was, we were crying, laughing so hard this entire time while watching it. I think at first one was probably the blackface with Justin Trudeau and like mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. and Barack Obama. Like right off the hop, I was like, "What? <laughs> like here we go? Like what well, we got ourselves into?" Um, but then just a lot of like shocking, mo- not a lot of shocking moments. But I thought it was just really good, feel good kind of a feel-good movie but had a really yeah. good point because i was reading or seeing some stuff about how the the holocaust section of the movie <laughs> where like before it was like the girl the lady that lady apparently died and that the family was suing uh sasha baron oh my goodness sasha baron cohen yeah um because of making it like degrading the whole situation of like she didn't know what she was getting himself into but so I was kind of worried what was going to happen in that portion. Mm. But when you watched it, it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. But still, it's still bad. But it was just good to, it was, it could have been a lot worse. So I'll look into that. I didn't know any of that lawsuit. What did, what did you think of the, uh, the dance of birth, Kyle? Dance of fertility, <laughs> actually, it was. That's what it was. Um, it, was <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> But that's when they like, something else. I, mm-hmm. I love how it just like it was. Oh yeah, like everyone's getting into it and just <laughs> enjoying it. And then all of a sudden, it just takes this. She starts like kind of putting up her dress a little bit. And you're like, okay, like that's a little like. Is she gonna do it? <laughs> oh, it goes on. I thought the whole abortion part was, was so funny. 
Oh yeah, that <laughs> that, that scene uh, just before we get to the abortion part, where he's at that father daughter gathering in the ball, and he's just he looks into that older guy, and he's like, "How much do you think my daughter's worth?" And he's like, five hundred bucks." And his that guy's that daughter looks so and is like, like "You're it's fucking disgusting." Yeah, this is <laughs> fucking <laughs> gross. <laughs> Like you can see it in her face. She was like, "I was treading you for life." <laughs> <laughs> well, the the thing about too, like when you mentioned the Trudeau thing, like that's what I liked is like he definitely goes after the Republican side more, but he throws it around a lot, and that's what one thing I like that. So when he meets those kind of like redneckish guys, and he that's we saw in the trailer, but like what's worse, Jerry. yeah, like what's <laughs> worse, the virus or the boyfriend. Democrats? Yeah, what's what's worse, virus or Democrats? And he's like, "Oh, well, they're all like, yeah, the Democrats." But then later on in that same scene when he starts telling them about what he does to his daughter, they're like, you can't do that. Like a woman should have rights, all this stuff. So it's like, they gave them a moment to shine of like, okay, I don't agree that the Democrats or anybody is worse than the virus. But the thing is yeah. like, I liked that, that it wasn't like they didn't get full on stereotypical people. And they even showed, okay, these guys are super hard, right? We're still even like, yeah, this book doesn't make any sense. This isn't the real truth. Like this girl's not going to be get aided by her vagina, you know? And that was another scene at the woman's rally or the woman's meeting when she is oh just gosh. talking and that one woman was just not having oh, any not of it not having, she was like we're so glad you came yeah call Everybody, her an uber take your pants down <laughs> take them down now and oh man thanks for coming stuff. But that's what I meant. Like, I think he tried. Oh, Uber. It's definitely more slanted, but he did throw shade at some and some, like, criticism at other parties, other people. So it wasn't just fully that. Is it mostly? Yes. But he still pokes fun at kind of everybody. So that cabin scene, he was he didn't break character for five days. That's just insane. Really? Yeah, I read I read oh that. That was one of the God. facts. He spent five days there in that cabin with those two guys. And he woke up and did breakfast, lunch, and dinner, went to bed as Borat. Like, just what a legend. Wow. I feel so bad for his wife. She must be so worried 24-7 when he does these movies. Like, they have children. Like, I just couldn't imagine. Like, shout out to Eliza Fisher, who is just a boss, who has to, like, obviously she knew what she's getting into and she married with him. But, like, how many – he's done this several times. Like, he said, I'm brutal. He almost – these guys pulled guns on him. It's like, he's, like, he is just such a – like, he's a comedic genius. The fact that, too, he doesn't break at all. Like, I don't know how he puts himself in these situations that he does not – laugh he does not blow his cover and she's like just even everything of when we buy that cupcake and they're just and he's like shoving in her mouth and he's doing all this stuff by the lady and they get that cake that says like jews won't replace us and that woman just does it and it's just like <laughs> oh my god but uh, she, was so she, gung -ho. So well. she was like okay i'll do it so <laughs> here is this cake <laughs> uh, this is kind of backtracking uh talking about the dates and something else that was discussed kind of during the commentary track as well is Taylor mentioned that no one talked about this at all on like social media, but there was a post on Twitter, February 27th, 2020, about someone dressed up as Trump yelling at VP Pence while speaking. There's so a YouTube post video of it. There's a yeah, YouTube so, thing, yeah. Yeah, but T Taylor was saying, you know, well, so this, they were filming in February of this year. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's what I was saying is it obviously was posted, but you know, are you really going to look at this video? You know, someone dresses Trump no. breaking into a rally and going, Oh, that's Borat too. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you're not going to know it's Sasha Baron Cohen. You just think it's some guy just getting aroused out of everybody. And that's why like he had so many different disguises this movie too. It was, uh, it's pretty my favorite my like the, the, the kkk outfit that he freaking walked into the event <laughs> well, yeah that one but i love like the other joke i think the first joke that really had me because at first the jokes were fine like at first i was worried they were gonna go really over the top like when he's sitting in that chair and he's asking about like what happened to azamat and he's like you're sitting on him and it's just chair with a penis and everything like that and i was like <laughs> i found it for oh, kyle's love it but like i was like i like it but i'm like this is really like over the top but then when he goes in that cell shop and he's like searching like whatever's <laughs> chicken cream pie or something. And he has yeah, a video. the cream pies. Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes into he it goes spit roast. Into, <laughs> yes, spit roast cream pie. And then he goes, oh, I'll take this to the washroom. Just give me a second. And it flips. And the guy's just like, ah, he definitely knows how to use it. Like, I think that was kind of stage because obviously he comes back in the film later. But man, in the moment, I was just laughing my ass off when he's slowly uh -huh. typing the guy's reaction. Like, oh. I, what I was saying, I really wish they had filmed when he came out of the bathroom later, like after, you know, five, five minutes later, and then he comes back out and he, 
he hands it back to him. I'll take a different one. Well, I always wonder that point of like when the camera's cut, if like, because that could have been real. And then they brought the guy back later in the film. I always wonder that point when it cuts, like, did he try to get security? Did he phone the police? And they had to stop and be like, no, no, no. Like, this is Sasha Baron. Like, this is like, this is a joke. Like, it just go, like, not go along with it, but like, this is for a movie. Just don't say anything. Sign this NDA. But uh, yeah, that would it would have been interesting. <laughs> Fuck, I love that scene so much. Any other scenes to shout out? Let's talk about the the faxing. Oh, oh the God. faxing. The faxing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry, yeah. I was just sexting my sister. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the dick pic. Right? Oh. And then, yeah, so that, that all happened. And then I love that we, that guy had to be, that, that guy had to be somewhat in on it because, like, the other people just sending it back and forth and whatnot. But I loved at the beginning of the movie that they tied it again in the first one. We don't know what happened to his wife. His wife's just gone. But his asshole neighbor got all his <laughs> stuff and his kids. And that was such a good little tie. Like, oh. I, li- I liked those. And Taylor, you, I think Taylor or Jessica, I can't remember who, but said, like, will we get a Karen joke? And we got a Karen joke right at the very end. Oh, I thought oh, we were yeah. going to get it. And then because we got a running of the Americans now instead of the Jews. And uh, She's come from a Walmart. She's got an AK-15. <laughs> She's oh. not happy. She shot Dr. Fossey. <laughs> that, that really caught me off guard at the beginning, though, of the movie when he's like, he walks into his house like, yeah, he got my house, he got my kids, and he's got my son, Huey Lewis. And Huey Lewis is like, no, my name is Jeffrey Epstein now. <laughs> <laughs> the movie's just so smart. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Like, there's so many lines. Even when I have the subtitles on, I feel like there's still, when I was laughing, there's going to be stuff that that i'd watch again and uh yeah i'm excited to i'm excited to one day do a double feature of them both because i think he did a good job of you know how like we talked about there's definitely more story stuff in this one but i think he had a good job of making something new and fresh but still honoring the first one too so i uh, any other scenes we want to shout out or talk about so it just because it changed before i got to because this was something else that taylor was wondering about how they did it and i'm gonna go back to the trump thing um Apparently, he spent, I think, uh, there, I lost it now. He spent hours getting his makeup on to be dressed like Trump. And then he sat in the bathroom for five hours, letting everything calm down. And then, and then yeah, and then busted out. And that was how he managed to go and sneak in there. Um, but, yeah, hours. he, yeah, he, I'm trying to, I have the thing that said, yeah, I spent five hours in makeup that morning with a prosthetics team changing my face to Trump. Then I ended up hiding into the bathroom, listening to conservative men for five hours until I broke out into the room. So five <laughs> hours of getting makeup and five hours of sitting in a bathroom, listening to conservative men talk. Poor man. Should have, they should have gave him that a fo- game of phone and listen to some music, you know, but maybe that just helped fire him up and everything like that. Like I, I love when he's still getting walked out and he's just like, no, that's my friend, Michael. Like he, I need to talk to him. <laughs> in character like as much as possible and it yeah it what really, if i give really you my wig <laughs> i was glad that was i was really worried that was going to be the ending of the film because we had seen in the previews and i was glad that wasn't because i liked it i don't think it was as funny because pence does stop for a second but then he just kind of carries on and goes back to his speech so i'm glad they didn't end there because it, I, it was funny but it wasn't as like big as i thought it was gonna be i thought there was stuff like later on down the line that was that was funny even if it was like the, the scripted stuff i thought it was great like like i said that was scripted but the co him being the covid zero patient thing i loved the whole like him looking at the walls being injected with the bat serum and stuff like that like all this <laughs> stuff was just like it was so stupid and out there but i i, I dug it all so apparently the interview about the holocaust is he's getting sued over that mm. yeah yeah that I, I'm not sure if that was what Kyle was talking about, but it was because it she wasn't told it was a comedy intended to mock the Holocaust and the Jews. Um, and she passed away earlier this year, so the family oh. is suing on her behalf. Yeah, that that would make sense. Uh, the the other one Joker I liked is when they go in the dress shop and they're talking to this woman and she goes, who, who oh. owns this store? And then, you know, oh, I do. And then she goes, a woman can own a store? He's like, yes, but then their brain breaks or whatever he said. Like, his reactions. Oh, and his, that was funny. He pointed reac- at the mannequins. <laughs> yeah. Look, 
<laughs> they they start them so young, <laughs> like <laughs> the writing's so good. But like just his re- like his facial reactions every time, like he's caught off guard. He has to stalk them. Then the, the other scene too, when that the the daughter goes and sees the woman to learn how to be a polite woman, and she like opens the bottle with her lady oh, parts boy. and everything like that. She's like, you will oh, never do that on a date ever <laughs> again, ever, never. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Uh, I don't, I, I'm, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, Kyle. Oh, I was going to say that, that uh, the girl who played the daughter, I forget her name, but she did a really good job. I was kind of worried that it might take the whole movie away and not mm-hmm. make it as good. But like that girl is hilarious and man, like good for her. Like, and not to like cut or break character in some of those scenes. Like, felt like she was pretty close at some points where it's just like this is so ridiculous like what is happening but she did a really good job i'm sure you guys already talked about it before but so good Mm -hmm. yeah the the fact to be a girl playing these parts and to do the fertility dance and stuff and not break character like these that's what i find most cringing about this whole uh movie is is I find the the girl actor to be the most like the the most like cringingly like wow you're doing this is just like I can't even imagine like bringing my dress up doing a dance or something to show you know obviously it's not real blood but like seriously or to be like when you're looking for the what was it the the hairdresser and (laughs) and being like going like look at the hair and she like flips up her dress and starts, you know, stroking the wrong kind of hair. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, how are you doing this? How are you doing this with a straight face? Like, so, you have to be bred for that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. For me, I don't, I don't, like I said, I didn't find that cringy. I thought it was hilarious. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that's just something wrong with me. But because I, I we're, while we're talking about it, I've been looking up kind of the facts just so, uh, everyone knows everyone for that Southern Bell dance. Everyone was offered $100 per person to dress up and dance as part of a fictional series for the Southern Bells making a debut. Um, and then so everyone who was volunteered had to do an online quiz. And anyone who could identify Sasha Cohen Baron, um, they, they were split up into two different recording sections. And everyone that said they could not identify him were put in section B. And that was the room that him and his daughter danced in. Mm, so that's no. how, yeah. So it was just a big, long thing. I'm sure there was other celebrities they had to identify to not see. So yeah, everyone in that room didn't know who he was. And so that was a gen, an actual genuine reaction to her flipping up her fertility. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I thought about that a few times because there's some scenes where literally, literally he'll be like, I need a disguise and then he has a disguise but then the next scene he's in a store as Borat and I think sometimes I wonder that if they went to multiple stores for multiple filmings for the real reactions and if they walked in and someone said, oh, you're Borat, right? They go, okay, we can't do it here and then go somewhere else because I think they tried to do Borat as much as they can because that's the character but obviously is a bit more popular some people don't know him. that's why I think that fax machine one was probably I think it was more planned just because he went back so many times and he's Borat and it just feels very Boratish. but I think that the majority of the time they tried and if they couldn't they would you know uh, what they would just have to throw a disguise on him or try something else yeah, and I think that's why he had so many. And uh, yeah, I think I think they did a good job. And I thought there was a good balance because he had lost his guys. But still, even then, when he's playing this like Southern Belle dad, it's like he's still kind of Borat. Like he has those Borat isms trying to hide him. So it's like it's still funny. It doesn't feel like oh, he's playing a completely different character. Where like last year when he did What Is America, he had three characters and they were completely different each of them. So I worried when I saw the guys like oh, is he gonna put on like a I'm American sort of deal. And he did, but in a way like Borat's trying to do it. And it's good because he's playing Borat while Borat's playing another person while trying to pretend not to be Borat. It's like a whole fourth dimension of acting. So I'm a dude playing a dude. This guy is another dude. That's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> he's doing what Downey said in that movie, but he's actually doing it, Sash Baron Cohen. Crazy. Yeah. Um the other good part about that movie was when he was singing to the uh, the Republican Party <sighs> with the band. Did they behind. have Wuhan or get oh, chopped yeah. up like the Saudis? <laughs> yeah, this is for my friends out there, and they're they're <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> no, she's she's to the right. <laughs> yeah. And like, oh yeah, they pick up on it and go. Can I oh. just? 
can I just pause and just say something? Shout out to Kyle for his sunlight right now. <laughs> shining yeah. Through your, yeah, shining through your window. Oh, yeah. That's it's it nighttime dark. here. And it's snowing. <laughs> it's four o'clock here. So <laughs> Taylor? Um, that, uh, yeah, that scene where they were doing like the, uh, the whole like, uh, sing along thing or whatever, like the Wuhans and Saudi Arabia and stuff. But when he's like, yeah, you know, she's back to the left, back to the left. And then Jim and Jeffrey go over there. He spent five days becoming their friends and convinced them to be searching online for his daughter that they found and got super into and then convinced them to actually go and find her and then relay the fact that he's going to be torn apart by what were they some animals with turnips up their assholes like and they were convinced and telling her this and the, something jessica mentioned too was like oh what if that's not even his daughter the actress and a random other lady that borat just set them up with like that was just that would have been hilarious but that's not the case obviously but yeah they just they were so convinced like those two guys i just like they were so so helpful on his journey I know. I hope we learn more about them down the line. As soon as he said, Alexa, order flashlights, I was just like, <laughs> they're not getting flashlights. Because <laughs> yeah. when he opens it up and like, he's like, oh my God, like, what, what are we doing here? It's, it's just good stuff. Maybe that whole cabin was good stuff. And watching him freaking do his exercises with the strap on. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't react at all. They just like no. looked at it and then ignored it and went on about their day, you know? I really would love to know what, because you know, when we talked about in the first one with the kids on the bus and they're like, okay, you know, this is a new guy to America. You're going to have some drinks on a bus and just talk to him. I really wonder what they said to these guys to let some stranger live with them in the middle of a pandemic for five days. Just approaches them out of a liquor store. Yeah. That or some sort of, they could have talked to him, but they said they're making a film and they could have said like, hey, we'll pay you some amount if we could crash here. Because we have, we're not from this country. We don't know where to go. We trust you guys. And hey, here's some compensation for it. I could see something like that too. If, you know, it, and plus I got flashlights out of it. That's a good deal. I'd bring in, <laughs> yeah. anybody. I'd bring in anybody, you know. That's a great deal. I agree. <laughs> Three. that. Yeah. Considering that Jessica like shed some light on how long he spent in that bathroom, I'm still blown away by how often Borat managed to sneak past security especially the interview at the end how he just walks in as the microphone guy but he managed to sneak in period and then come back dressed in his like sexy clothes or whatever like it just <laughs> blows my mind he's sneaky guy he's sneaky guy and i guarantee you his whole team that he works with like knows how to do these things you know he's getting the best professional people that try to make it as safe as possible have little tips stuff like that like it's just he's running like a whole operation over and plus it's like this uh, like this isn't his first rodeo. He's done this now for like he's been doing this since the early two thousands now. So it's like he's the master of this. You know he's mastered this craft. Even though security gets somewhat tighter, there's still a way to <laughs> sit in the bathroom for five hours. You know like he outsmarted them. And like that's the thing. It's like it is a little scary to think of like if you had someone in there that was want to do some bad stuff. You know it's like all I had to do is sit in the bathroom for five hours and yeah. something really bad could have happened. So it's it, it it's again shows like sometimes how like careless people are even if it's all protected. Yeah. You probably had like an out, out of order sign or something on the door. Probably. So people didn't even question why it was always locked or something. But even then if you you wouldn't other than maybe if you're the janitor, but you might just assume every time you come in oh there's just another guy in that stall right? You're not going to assume that some guy sitting there with a Donald Trump costume would <laughs> yeah. happen. So it's, it's like, not my first assumption. Yeah. And even, <laughs> even if there is no janitor then at the end of the day it's just people going in and out and they're just like oh that stall's taken. So they're, they're I, like if I see some shoes I'm not like oh I wonder how long that guy's been there you know. People just go <laughs> Is that one you make a good point <laughs> that's something that i you know from looking at him from the front obviously wearing his donald trump mask you can obviously tell it's not donald trump but just if you see him like he's hunched over running through the crowd you think you think that's trump that's donald yeah. trump <laughs> <laughs> when they were shooting him from yeah, the back and the side yeah he, yeah he he looked like it <laughs> yeah. oh my god uh any other scenes to shout out anything specific uh th that scene when he was in the bathroom stall with his daughter and he's like you know flush the <laughs> oh, baby down I the know. toilet like oh, no, that's just it. so bad okay oh. i just want to go to the fact though that they went to this christian like <laughs> for the abortion and they're just i put the baby in my daughter 
And the guy's just like, it's okay. And it's like, I don't, I don't know that you quite understood the, yeah. that they're saying that this is the father and that yeah. is his baby. And I think he did yeah. eventually because he clarified. I think he's just trying to stay level-headed, I guess, because he's like, so you're saying this is your daughter. And he goes, yes. And then she's like, is this your father? And says, yeah. And then he's like, okay. So, and then he just kind of like, <laughs> can't keep talking. So I feel like he just doesn't want to, because in that real, like, I guess in real life, I would say, hey, that's gross. But I'd probably just say like, just carry on like you're if you're not going to convince i don't know but that's a i, I just i just think it's hilarious that you yeah. would choose to go to a, a christian <laughs> a christian center for pregnancies for an abortion quote unquote to get rid of a baby like obviously that's the choice for the filming and you know it just makes it that much better but it's just like as soon as the name popped up that it was like pastor whoever i was just like <laughs> oh here this we go gonna go well He's just, was, yeah. he's just telling him, like, yeah, I took her behind the dumpster and put a baby in her. <laughs> you do that to your daughter? <laughs> and honestly, again, for his background, I think he acted pretty level-headed. I think they probably were hoping they'd get a better reaction out of that guy. It was still good, but, like, for him to be like, yeah, Christian, they're throwing this incest thing. He acted pretty, like, hey, you shouldn't yeah. do this, but he didn't lose it all of them. So I think they probably yeah. would have liked it a bit better. But at the end of the day, again, it shows that like, okay, even this Christian guy, he might not be like the hardcore Christian where they're against abortion. But if he feels you need to go do that, then go do that. You're just clearly not going to do it here, right? So. Yeah. Well, he was always, he was also like, uh, you know, you don't make life, God makes life. Mm -hmm you know but it's not breathing it is breathing no look it's not, it's not like every like it's yeah. such a good setup it's, it's just very well done yeah it was it was i'm trying to remember any other like crazy scenes that they did but it's just yeah, it's just it's, a crazy movie it's just a crazy movie yeah just like him like yeah leaving his village and like oh that was another thing so when he returns to the village and he cuts the deal with the uh premier or whatever <laughs> and he's back at the village and jessica shouted this out when they're like they have like the boys on layaway or whatever and they go in the crate and like you see to kevin spacey's house or whatever like that <laughs> oh, i didn't my even God. see that Oh yeah, yeah. We now uh, we now export grooms, or we now export young boys instead of girls. And then yeah, there's like six boys, and it's like two oh. Kevin Spacey. <laughs> oh yeah, see, that's I'm excited to watch this again because I didn't see that at all. That that's that's fantastic. I'm I will say I'm amazed that they ended this movie on such a positive note, like pro feminist, mm -hmm. yeah. pro women have choices, and I don't know it kind of seems out of place for the rest of the movie being so anti everything oh, it was kind of like the storyline wasn't it though of like her like yeah. coming out of like realizing how ridiculous all this stuff is and like kind of brought like what they would say like both sides together of like this is all ridiculous mm -hmm. trying to help the girl out yeah, yeah it definitely goes storyline wise but it it doesn't necessarily fit like motif wise for like comparing this one and the first one I just wouldn't have expected it to end on pro-feminist. Yeah, I think, well, I think that's the, like, it shows, like, what's changed in 10 years, even for him. Like I said, not many people have seen it, but people should check out. It's only, I think, six or eight episodes. What is America? He did this pretty much, but not Borat. But that was very politically driven. It'd be lots of poking fun at stuff, but it'd always have like, a clear message at the end. And I feel like if america specifically the world but america specifically wasn't the way he was i don't think we'd be getting a borat too i think he was inspired by that and he said well how can i do it and i also think because not many people watched what is america i think there is a slant where he said you know what people didn't check that out really i gotta bring back borat because you know everyone's gonna go and watching it for borat for the shock humor but then stuff like that that feminist ending things like that people are gonna walk away at that and of course they're gonna think about the funny scenes but i think he made this one to have several messages where borat has a few but borat one was more about just poking fun at stereotypes and poking fun at things like that they didn't really have a resolution where this had a resolution of like these things are bad even the film ends with go vote you know like it, it's a it's clearly very like it's almost just a big commercial to go get americans to vote you know and that's where i i think he had a clear message even if covid didn't happen he had a clear mindset and that's why i think it won he won a somewhat happy ending to show like hey things can be shit you know you might be in some christian abortion clinic and it might not be going your way but at the end of the day it can be a happy ending if you if you if you open your mind i think that's what he was trying to 
put forward that he came from a life of, you know, women live in a cage. They, all this stuff. If they drive a car, the Hindenburg blows up. Like he, but that was showing like, even this guy that's so far gone, if you open up your mind, your life could possibly be better for yourself and others. And I think that's what he's trying to do. You know, he's trying to show some people that are maybe very hard, hard right or hard, hard left to be open to think honestly more hard, hard right. Cause I don't think this is really focused to go like vote for Trump or anything like that. So. You reminded me of that one scene where he's trying to buy like the cage at the farm market or whatever. And he's like, how many girls can you fit in this cage? And the guy just blatantly is like, just one, you know, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it's, love- not like, it's not like the mexican children <laughs> yeah i love that when he was doing that the daughter was acting like she was getting a puppy or something like oh please can i have this one please and he's just like oh good daughters you know daughters. Just such a handful you know it's just oh it's so, <laughs> so again just very good I, I keep saying so good but it's just i run out of adjectives to explain how funny it was anything else are we taking this to a close uh Either I mean I have to probably take off here so I can get milk. So just mm-hmm. you know, in case the listeners want to know. The um, world's longest so, grocery store run. So <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if there is anything else super specific. Um, but if there is, I might just have to jump oh, out. What was the name of that milk that he says? Like, uh, but, oh yeah, I wanted to ask Travis. I uh, if there was Uh-oh. cheese just sitting beside Taylor salmon, would you eat it? No. Because, <laughs> because he called he called Titty uh, the what was it the cheese milk makers or something yeah, like yeah, that. I, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Look at those big ones. Yeah, no, I, I would not eat that with the salmon. So, uh, yeah, no, I I think that's everything for myself. Like, uh, if I'm in a rating ballpark, I think I'm like a nine out of ten. I think just because I found, I because I think the first one's like a ten out of ten. The only thing is I agree, Jessica, as far as when there's more of the acting stuff, I feel like some of the pacing issues, sometimes we'd go a while with getting one of the, like the skits, like a real life skit, so that it felt very much like a movie, which was still good, but not as good as the other stuff. But yeah, I'd be nine out of ten. I'm pretty, I'm pretty high on it. I'll watch it again, and I'm just happy it didn't suck. Because, you know, Khan and I, we've been through that with Zoolander. That was a big, that was, that was a big hard. shot to the nuts, you know, like that, that's yeah, tough. Yeah, man. Yeah, Anchorman, oh. everything. If if they ever make a Step Brothers two, you know we're fucked. Dumb and Dumber was awful, you know. Taylor, did you like Dumb and Dumber two? I own it. <laughs> yeah. In a steel case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyone else want to drop their final thoughts already, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, I'm gonna give it. I'm um, with you. A nine out of ten. I like the first one more because it just had a lot more shock value and a lot more of the skits. But this one just definitely blew my mind, and it held it held held high. I I definitely am gonna watch it again. I recommend it to whoever's interested in this film it was hilarious and it was super super well timed to society i'm going to give it um an eight out of ten i have not seen the first one so i can't use that as a comparison but uh i felt like it was very entertaining there was definitely not a moment that i wanted to not watch it so i mean it was like a i don't want to watch but (laughs) Um, yeah, definitely a eight out of 10, totally recommend. And, uh, you know, I definitely had a few good laughs. So, yep. I'll pass it on to you, Jessica. I don't generally do the rating scale anymore. So, but I would put this on the definitely high end of recommend it. I am excited to watch it again with subtitles and not having to talk, uh, Oh, you're muted. Oh, no, that's unfortunate. We can't hear you. Okay, yeah. I'll just keep going. Can't hear you. He's trying to screw with us. He's he thinks he's so funny. <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to talk right now. And you didn't watch through. the watch along with subtitles? No, we did. Okay. Jessica said you didn't. No, I just said I'm excited to watch it with subtitles and not okay. having to talk. Okay. Just like the, the they're... I'm not saying, you know, we watch it with subtitles, but it's still trying to read subtitles and talk and look up facts and beat Travis, you know? <laughs> I, I had to, like, move my hair constantly. and. Well, yeah, I got to do that a lot. My hair's a mess right now. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, like, like we said, you know, you get a lot more of the jokes when you can fully concentrate and watch the subtitles and kind of pick up on those little quips that you might not have got otherwise. But, yeah, I thought it was hilarious. I love that... Uh, I don't know. 
it wasn't just making fun of, you know, just the one party. It was, there's a lot of different jokes that hit on a lot of different things um, that really, there's a good chance something that you believe in is being made fun of in this movie. <laughs> and that's quality entertainment. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, you get the yeah. final word. Oh, final word. Yeah, no. I would say nine out of 10 for me as well, too. I think the first one's still better. Only just because, you know, it's, it's kind of that shock value. You've never seen anything really like it before, but this is still like such a great film. And the fact that they did it in such a short amount of time and to produce it and, and put it out like this is, uh, was, was amazing. And it was, it was so good, funny. I love the storyline and adding another character into it to just build on to the already, um, um, I guess, history that we have with just with Warat. So no, I thought it was really good and already was recommending and get my friends uh, to watch it already. Like watch it with my housemates here mm-hmm. in Australia, like right away. And we're all just killing ourselves laughing. So I think you went and got would, Amazon Prime just to watch this there, Kyle. You, you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, where can they find us? You can find us, ladies and gentlemen, with your internet connection in the search bar, ladies and gentlemen. Geekverse.ca is our home base. Geekverse on Facebook, Geekverse Cast on Twitter. Be sure to check us out on Patreon because on Patreon you'll find all these awesome rewards and exclusive tiers, including the commentary track that we attempted for Borat, the subsequent movie film featuring me, Jessica, and Madison. So, yeah. Okay, that's everything. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, when you hear from us next, it will not be boring. Did you say hear from us sex? Next. Oh, I thought you said yeah, sex. Okay. sex as well too. Yeah, when you when you when you have, when you have sex, it won't be boring. When you <laughs> hear from yeah. us next. Especially if you have the hundred dollar mood lights. Hundred dollar mood lights, yeah.